So far, we discussed DNA molecules, and we said that DNA molecules inside our cells exist predominantly as a double helix structure. Now, this double helix structure consists of two individual strands of nucleic acids. So we have these two strands of DNA molecules running in an anti-parallel fashion and bonding via hydrogen bonds and van der Waal forces. Now, what about the other type of nucleic acid? So we also have ribonucleic acids, RNA molecules. The question is, what exactly is the structure of these RNA molecules? Well, unlike DNA molecules, which exist in a double-stranded form, RNA molecules inside our cells exist mostly as single strands of nucleotides. But these single strands of nucleotides, under the conditions found in our cells, usually twist and fold into a well-defined three-dimensional structure. Now, the most common type of form that these RNA molecules fold into is known as the stem loop form. And this stem loop form is formed when the ribonucleic acid folds into this double helical structure, just like in DNA, in which we contain these complementary sequences, these complementary nucleotides that can form base pairs. But in these stem loop structures, we also commonly contain these mismatched nucleotides, and that destabilizes our structure in that localized region and causes causes the bulging out of that structure as we'll see in just a moment. So let's suppose we have the following sequence of nucleotides in a given RNA molecule. So this is the beginning, the 5N, and this is the end, the 3N of the ribonucleic acid. Now, if we take this RNA molecule and place it into an aqueous environment found in our cell, it can fold into some type of three-dimensional structure. And to demonstrate what the stem loop structure actually looks like, let's suppose it folds into the following structure. So this is the 5 end here, and this is the 3 end here. Now, notice that this sequence C-U-G-A-G-G-U is complementary to the sequence G-A-C-U-C-C-A. Now, what that means is these will essentially fold onto themselves to basically interact because these two sequences of RNA are complementary. And that means when they interact, they form these hydrogen bonds, which is a stabilizing effect. And we form the following stem of this structure. Now, this is the loop. And that's because when these two interact, we have this section here that is not complementary complementary to itself and so it will form this loop structure in which we don't have any hydrogen bonds formed between these bases and that means this will destabilize this localized region of the structure and that can play an important role in further determining what that RNA molecule actually folds into and we'll discuss that in much more detail in future lectures. So this is what we call a stem loop diagram. We have this stem section here in which the DNA molecules essentially intertwine along a common axis. And this is the same type of structure that we see in the DNA molecules. So we have these two complementary strands. The problem here is these strands actually consist of a single strand. And in DNA molecules, we have two different strands. So in RNA molecules, because they exist predominantly as a single strand, these complementary sequences here and here, so the blue and the red, come from that same polynucleotide chain. But in DNA, the complementary sequences in the double helix structure come from two opposite polynucleotide chains. So that's the, different, that's the difference between the double helix in DNA and the double helix in RNA molecules. So we have these complementary sections that interact to form hydrogen bonds, and that's a stabilizing effect. While this is the loop, they contain the mismatched nucleotides, and that means they cannot interact. And so they will destabilize this localized region of space in our RNA molecule. Now, just like in proteins, we have this tertiary structure and secondary structure 
RNA molecules can also form secondary and tertiary structures. So when nucleotides found in close proximity along that particular polynucleotide chain interact via these hydrogen bonds between the nucleotide bases, that can form a secondary structure. In fact, when we have these nucleotides found far away interacting via these base, pairing, uh, base pairings, then that can form tertiary structure. And so just like proteins contain this secondary and tertiary structure because these uh, bases along the polynucleotide chain of the RNA molecule can interact with one another, RNA molecules can also form secondary and tertiary structure. And this complexity, this ability of the RNA molecule to form this complex structure gives it the ability to function in many different ways. And this means just like proteins can function in biological catalysts, RNA molecules can also act as biological catalysts, as we'll see, for example, when we discuss the process of protein synthesis. So, in protein synthesis, we have these cellular machinery structures known as ribosomes, and ribosomes contain RNA molecules, and these RNA molecules act as biological catalysts to basically synthesize that protein chain, and we'll discuss that in much more detail in a future lecture. Now, the final thing that I'd like to mention is the tRNA molecule, or the transfer RNA molecule. As we'll see in a future lecture, there are many types of RNA molecules that exist inside our cells. And these RNA molecules can basically act in certain specific ways. One of these RNA molecules is the tRNA molecule, and this is the shape that the tRNA molecule actually takes. So we have one, two, three of these loops, and these loops are a result of these mismatched nucleotides, and so they destabilize the structure ever so slightly. But we also have these stabilizing regions, the stem regions, where we have these a complementary sequence of nucleotides. For example, here we have UGCG, and this is ACGC, which is complementary to that blue sequence. And so these stabilize the structure, they intertwine in the way that we show here, while these sections essentially destabilize the molecule. And because of this specific structure of our RNA molecule, what it is able to do is, it is able to actually find and carry the specific amino acid to the ribosome and that allows the elongation and the synthesis of protein molecules. So just like proteins can form secondary and tertiary structure, our RNA molecules can also exist as these molecules that contain secondary and tertiary structure. And the most common type of structure is the stem loop structure of RNA molecules.